Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in, naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? The king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto me, or one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Yeah. Cowboy and I lived up under here. This was home. But like most homeless people, I had family in this city. This was my beloved city, Indianapolis. I went from family members' home to family members' home to eventually I ended up under a bridge for a year and a half as a high school student. And my principal, Barbara Gillen Waters, She would let me come in at the locker room to shower and clean up before school started. And she would take my green duffel bag and wash my clothes. It was because of her compassion. It was because of Dolores Townsend. I would work on the newspaper all night long at her house and we would sleep on her floor in her dining room. until Annie Smith found out what was going on and her and her husband they moved me into their home at 36 and Richard and I stayed there for a while I graduated I was homeless when I graduated from high school went to the University of Indianapolis as a homeless guy and scholarship paid for my housing there But that was my way out of homelessness. They said, if I got an education, I can get out of homelessness. They never said that it was the caring people who kind of gave me life again. Just like what we do at Seven Pillars. If caring people who are trying to give life again to people who are pretty much at the end of their road. This is where I live. My, my floor was ash and dirt. My walls didn't have any nice paintings or anything on them. This is the reality of a lot of people in our city. What people don't get to see. What people don't know. If it wasn't for a homeless guy named Cowboy, I would have been out here all by myself. He taught me how to survive. He made pits so that I could stay warm. The irony is it was those same pits that killed him. 
We had a dog too. <laughs> come up. I go to school every day. What human beings should be living up under bridges in a world-class city I couldn't go and stay at Wheeler Mission because I wasn't 18. Outreach Inc. didn't exist then. There was a, a little place over near Tech High School, the stopover, that people could go to then. That's why it's important now for me not to forget. Not to forget where I came from, not forget that there are other people who are still going through the same things that I was going through. And not to forget that a bridge and a tent should be nobody's existence. Nobody should have to die because they frostbitten or nobody should have to die because they burn stuff to stay warm. And so, Seven pillars exist for that reason. To bring dignity back to those who are experiencing homelessness. They're our friends, they're family. And that this will not always be. And so it hasn't always been my existence, but it's over 12,000 people's existence in Indianapolis. I know the numbers say only 6,000, but reality is they're sleeping in abandoned properties. They're even sleeping in some of the hospital emergency rooms. Down at the Greyhound bus station, up under bridges all over the city, in wooded areas, along train tracks. That's the reality of Indianapolis. That's the underground. That's the hidden secret. But we're trying to remove the secrecy of what is ugly, not just in our city, but in all kinds of cities. Those people who have great potential, they just don't have the loving, supportive family or network that they need to have. So seven pillars in every church and every person who wants to fulfill Matthew 25, they're doing it. And soon, we're gonna end homelessness in this city. And we're gonna give people dignity in the process. And they'll be able to tell their stories, cause I told mine.